All right, thank you everybody for coming. Uh, it means a lot to see a lot of you here, and it means a lot to see a lot of friends in the audience as well. I want to thank Rita um, and John for putting on uh, what is uh, just an incredible conference. Uh, it feels like such a pleasure to be able to come here and just see so many artists, friends, all in the same place. Um, it's a, a lot different than NFT NYC, so this is this is great. Um, yeah, I was just trying to think like where to begin um, with all of this. Um, it's really nice seeing No Riders up on uh, the second largest screen I've seen it on. Um, yeah, I guess just quickly the the story of this piece. Um, a gallery reached out, said, "Hey, do you want to put some artwork up on a Times Square billboard?" I said, "No, thank you." They reached out and said, do you want to put up art on a, a boat in, in Miami? And I said, uh, definitely no thank you. And then they reached out and said, we have this billboard in Hong Kong. And uh, at the time, I was just hearing a lot of the traditional art talking about, uh, talking about Hong Kong, saying, hey, Hong Kong is back, Hong Kong is back. And uh, Hong Kong wasn't back. You know, I think a lot of us followed the protests, umbrella movement, student protests in 2019. And it just really felt like uh, art washing. Uh, you know, they wanted, the art world wanted convenient access to the Asian art market and everybody else just kind of wanted to let it, let it slide, you know, it'd be really nice to put everything behind us. Um, so with that kind of as a context, I uh, just want to show some solidarity, so I put this up in uh, the largest billboard in Causeway Bay, right in the middle of Art Week, uh, and it was up for three days uh, until the Hong Kong Free Press uh, caught wind of uh, these, uh, whenever it moves again. Um, uh, text flashing across the screen of protesters' names, ages, sentences uh, for the Hong Kong 47. Uh, so it really quickly, um, once that got out, kind of global press picked it up. The Chinese state media picked it up. They said I was pro-rioter, which I love. I was honored to be pro-rioter. Uh, and they sent some, uh, sent some guys uh, to, the, to the billboard to, to have it taken down. They threatened the gallery. Uh, and then they, they came after me, they built malware, uh, and tried to, uh, try to get me. Um, I just think uh, art is a, uh, a profound tool for uh, impacting uh, society. Uh, it has been historically. Uh, and what we have as digital artists, I think, is an unprecedented opportunity in art. And uh, I know that the uh, art market is uh, hard right now for a lot of artists. Um, but I think the thing is, if we can all figure out how to just kind of get through this, the promise and the potential of this space is, is, is unprecedented for artists. Um, you know, I came up with graffiti, you know, and before it was I'd put something on a wall and maybe three crews and two joggers would see my work. You know, I feel like that was good exposure. Uh, but now, look, we, we all have screens. I don't think that we're going to have any fewer screens. We have these billboards in public displays. Um, we have more options for having our art seen than any artist has ever had before us. So if you look at the ability for us to impact the culture, you just look at how many options we have to have our work get out there. Uh, we're in a really unique, really unique place right now. So I think that people that want to have an impact uh, we have more avenues to do that than we've ever had before. And I think that our art is as relevant as our ability to impact the culture with it. And if you look at how we can impact the culture and just how many people we can touch with our work right now, it's more than it's ever been before. And I think it's just going to increase. Um, I can't imagine that we're going to get away from screens. I can't imagine that anybody here will have less of an opportunity to impact people in the future. And if you think about that, compare that to art, compare that to how relevant we can be, I, I just think that we're really, really in a kind of a golden era for art. Um, so just really, really excited to kind of see what we all come up with in the space and kind of excited to see kind of where we all go with this. Um, you know, but I think a big part of that is like, we don't want to end up being like a space where we had seven dudes who made money selling art on blockchain. You know, I think that's kind of the fear and I don't think anything's a given. Um, I think that, we could end up being this global, inclusive art movement. I think that you, you know, I know that a lot of us have seen Osanachi here. Um, I know that we've seen a lot of people from around the world in places that traditionally don't have access to art markets. A lot of collectors around the world. Not everybody can go to the Louvre, not everybody can go to the MoMA. Um, there's a lot of places around the world where you don't have access to art, uh, whether you're creating art, whether you're collecting art. 
And uh, I think one of the most profound things that we've done in the space is we have democratized access to art, not only creation of art, but also just the ability to experience art. Um, so you have people from marginalized communities and places around the world that can participate meaningfully. We have a long ways to go uh, when it comes to keeping an even playing field, but we are orders of magnitude ahead of where we were in traditional art for people being able to participate meaningfully, to expect to be able to be seen, to expect to have the art to be purchased, to be able to participate. And again, like art matters. Like art has a profound ability to impact the culture in ways that words can't. And I think that we're entering a very interesting era in time right now. Uh, if you look at kind of uh, art being at the forefront of technology, you look at um, a lot of us here um, have been playing with AI for a minute now, right? The rest of the world is catching up. Artists at this stage where we are right now um, we're kind of at the front of it. Um, and I think that we just have a really unique opportunity to be a part of that, to influence culture, influence change. We have all of the options we do right now with screens, the visibility of our work, to really make a profound impact. Uh, not just kind of within our space, not just kind of for our own careers, but kind of broadly. Art's having a, a renaissance uh, in a really true way uh, where People are paying attention to what we're doing. Uh, people are being able to consume art, be able to appreciate art in a completely different way than they have before. Um, so if you kind of look at that, I know it's like, I know it's hard right now uh, for a lot of artists to make, make sales and make a living with this. You know, it's not 2021 anymore. But at the same time, we've matured quite a bit since then. And I, I feel like if you can figure out how to stick it out for the next couple years, uh, the artists here today, the artists here in this room, uh, your peers who couldn't make it here, um, really just kind of the front line of advancing this whole new era of art um, in our space. And I think that when it comes to the ethos of the space, when it comes to kind of tying it in with crypto, tying it in with anti-censorship, tying it in with inclusivity, accessibility, sovereignty, I think a lot of the ethos that underlies and makes kind of what we're all doing special, unique, and different than kind of what's happened before, uh, I think is critical. I mean, we're laying the groundwork for tens of thousands of artists that will follow us. So what everybody here is doing matters tremendously. Um, and it matters that we hold the line. It matters that we hold the line on what we believe in. It matters that you know, we act principally, that we follow you know, kind of our, our gut on a lot of these things. And as hard as it is, I know that what we're doing is essentially laying the foundation for what's to come for so many people. And again, like it, it really truly matters. Um, and you know, I don't want to be, I don't want to be the scenario where it turns out to the seven dudes who sold money to sold art on blockchain. It was like a historical art, historical footnote as this weird little thing that happened. Um, I just see that we have the potential to include so many people in this space that wouldn't otherwise, I mean, not everybody is a brother's cousin, sister of a Gagosian, and, you know, can get a shot in the art world, right? Um, we can include people that I feel like would not have had uh, a real shot to be included or a real fair chance to be included. And I think the strength of what we're doing, the strength of our movement, the strength of our message, uh, is not one that comes from an individual. I think it comes collectively from all of us. Um, nobody cares if it's just a couple people selling art. I think what matters and what amplifies everybody's message is the ability for us to be inclusive, the ability for us to include everybody, the ability for, to give artists around the world a chance to actually make a living or contribute to their living doing this. Um, that's what's ultimately gonna increase the profile of art it's what's gonna drive people to pay attention to art. And when we enter this kind of new era of AI technology, I mean, the AI disinformation, it's gonna be the craziest next five years, 10 years. Um, it's gonna be kind of an unprecedented period, which is terrifying in a lot of ways, but in a lot of ways, um, it's, it's gonna be profoundly important. And uh, I don't know, bring your popcorn, you know? So, I don't know, I think, so I just wanna say, um, I really appreciate all of you. Um, and again, I think what we're doing truly matters. Uh, our ability to impact the world with art matters. And, uh, you know, stick it out through this period. Um, we, you know, we, 
we will live or die on our ability to include artists at the margins of the space. Um, you know, either our space is gonna grow by allowing people who are most likely to leave to be able to have a real shot. And not everybody can be collected, I get that. We're still working on how many collectors are here. But if everybody has a fair shot, I think people are willing to put in the effort and the people most likely to leave will stay and we'll add more people and their space will grow. Uh, if not, if we don't support the people at the bottom, if we allow the stratification of the space to kind of continue unchecked, uh, we will slowly die. And I think we kind of fight those two opposing influences. Uh, but ultimately, um, I think it just really comes down to us and holding on to our ethos, um, being aware of how important it is to have an inclusive and accessible art space, uh, and just making personal choices. Uh, again, it's a collective effort. If we all make personal choices to make sure that we're inclusive, uh, what we're doing ultimately all matters. Um, and you know, you've all made the journey out to Lisbon, um, and I think that what I've seen here so far this week has been profoundly inspiring. Um, it's a pleasure to see you all here. Uh, it's a pleasure to engage with you all online. And I am just incredibly excited to see kind of what happens next with all of this. Uh, so thank you all. Um, appreciate you all tremendously. And uh, yeah, I'll uh, be probably offending all of you at some point in the near future. <laughs> thank you.